In the previous lectures, we have been discussing mechanical dynamic systems. Today, we are going to briefly show the flow and effort variables of other dynamic systems. After, we will discuss a couple electrical dynamic systems. Some more common dynamic systems include a translational mechanical system, where the flow variable is velocity and the effort variable is force. A second dynamic system is a rotational mechanical system, where the flow variable is angular velocity and the effort variable is torque. Another dynamic system is a hydraulic system, where the flow variable is volumetric flow rate and the effort variable is pressure. Heat transfer is another dynamic system, where the flow is heat flux and the effort is temperature. A final dynamic system is an electrical dynamic system. The flow variable for this system is current and the effort variable is voltage. Each one of these systems has generalized components that can be carried over from dynamic system to dynamic system. A generalized inductor is a device where effort is related to the derivative of flow and it stores kinetic energy. In an electrical system, the generalized inductor is an inductor. You will see that the derivative of the flow variable, current, is proportional to the voltage. In a translational mechanical system, the generalized inductor is a mass. The derivative of the flow variable, velocity, is proportional to force. To model an inductor with state-space equations, the input is U1, voltage. The output, Y1, is current. The state variable would then be X1, which is current. The state equations derived from this system would be X dot equals 1 over L times U1 and the output for the system is y1, which is also equal to x1. These dynamic systems also have generalized resistors. Generalized resistors are devices where effort is a function of flow. Additionally, they are incapable of storing energy. In an electrical system, the effort variable, voltage, is proportional to the flow variable, current. In a mechanical system, the effort variable, force, is proportional to the velocity. A final component of these dynamic systems is a generalized capacitor. This is a device where effort is related to the time integral of flow. Generalized capacitors have the ability to store energy. In an electrical system, a capacitor has the ability to store charge. The effort variable, voltage, is the time integral of the flow variable, current. In a mechanical system, the generalized capacitor is a spring. The effort variable, force, is the time integral of displacement. In an electrical system, the state variable, x1, is the charge in the capacitor. The input, u1, for the system is current through the capacitor. Then, x dot equals u1. The output, y1, is the voltage across the capacitor, which equals 1 over c times x1. When combining these components, we can create dynamic systems that can be used for different practical purposes. For this circuit, we combine a resistor and a capacitor in series. The input to the system is U1, voltage. The output for the system is the voltage measured across the capacitor. When selecting state variables, we must look at each component of the system. The resistor is a purely dissipative device and does not involve any kind of energy storage. Next, we look at the capacitor. The capacitor has the ability to store charge, so therefore it requires a state variable. This state variable is x1, the voltage across the capacitor. The voltage across the capacitor is the input voltage minus the voltage across the resistor, or current through the resistor times the resistance. The change in voltage, or x1 dot is equal to the inverse of capacitance multiplied by the input voltage minus the voltage across the capacitor divided by the resistance. The output y1 is equal to the voltage across the capacitor x1. When applying these state space equations, we see that this circuit acts like a low pass filter. When a voltage in this system or in another effort variable is applied in another dynamic system, the capacitor or generalized capacitor will not allow the signal to pass. When an input is applied slowly, the generalized capacitor allows the signal to pass into the rest of the circuit. 
In this circuit, we see that there is now a resistor and an inductor in series. The input to the system is the voltage, U1. The output for the system is the voltage across the inductor, Y1. As we mentioned previously, the inductor has the ability to store kinetic energy. Once again, the resistor is unable to store any kind of energy. This leaves the inductor as the only energy storage device. The state variable for the system is current through the inductor, X1. To find the change in current across the inductor, we subtract the voltage across the resistor from the input voltage, all multiplied by 1 over L. The output is the same as the X1 dot equation. Finally, we put a resistor, an inductor, and a capacitor in series. The energy storage devices in this electrical system are the inductor and the capacitor. The input to the system is voltage, U1. The output for the system is the voltage across the capacitor, Y1. Since there are two energy storage devices, the inductor and the capacitor, there are two state variables, voltage across the capacitor, X1, and the voltage through the, through the inductor, X2. For this system, there will be three state equations. Integrating the voltage across the capacitor, X1 dot, will give us 1 over C times X2, the current through L. Integrating the current through the inductor, X2 dot, will equal 1 over L times the voltage across the capacitor. The voltage across the capacitor is the input voltage minus the voltage drop across the resistor, current through L times resistance, minus the voltage across the inductor. Finally, the output, Y1, is the voltage across the capacitor, X1. This circuit is called a bandpass or a notch filter. This bandpass is dependent upon the properties of the resistor, the capacitor, and the inductor. As a last point in the lecture, we want to emphasize that each system stated at the beginning of the lecture is comparable to other systems. We will examine an RLC circuit and a mass spring damper system. The state variables for the mechanical system are spring displacement and upwards velocity of the mass. The state variables for the RLC circuit is amount of charge in C and the current through L. You will see that X1 relates to the storage of potential energy in the generalized capacitors and that X2 is the stored kinetic energy in the generalized inductors. The state equations for the mechanical system are X1 dot equals X2, which is the change in spring displacement equals upwards velocity of the mass. The state equations for the electrical system is X1 dot equals X2, which is the change in charge in the capacitor equals the current through the inductor. The X2 dot equation for both of these dynamic systems is the sum of the effort variables. The mechanical system is equal to 1 over M times the input force minus the force from the spring minus the force from the damper. The electrical system is 1 over L times the input voltage minus the voltage across the resistor minus the voltage across the capacitor.